Okay, sure. Uh, did you have uh, India first? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, India. Oh. Sir, we are doing. Say something. Oh, sir, we are doing. Just we need one minute. Uh, desktop. Click on desktop, beta. Click on desktop. Share screen only. Share screen only. Share screen only. Good morning to Mr. Kanegdun and all the participants from different countries. Today we the students of Rukmini Devi Public School are here to continue the series of Food for Thought and the topic is Desserts of India. Firstly, let's talk about our school. Our school, Rukmini Devi Public School, is a premier league institution having a strength of around 2,000 students and 200 teachers situated in Northwest Delhi. The state-of-the-art infrastructure and facilities of international standard and provides a stimulus congenial environment. The school is also being affiliated by CBSE for CBSCI curriculum. There is nothing more mouth-watering on earth like Indian desserts. Some of the Indian desserts are Gajar Halwa, Sandej, Kaju Burfi, Modak, Gulab Jamun and Rasmalai. Gulab jamun, a dish which excites our taste buds. Gulab jamun is a dessert often eaten at <coughs> festivals or major celebrations such as marriages. There are various types of gulab jamun and every variety has a distinct taste and appearance. Ingredients 1 cup milk powder, half cup full cream milk, quarter, cu quarter cup unsalted butter, 10 to 12 pieces of cashew nuts, 7 to 8 cardamom, 12 pistachios and 4 to 5 tablespoons of ghee. Now comes the recipe. Soak the suji in a half cup of water so that it may make it soft. In a bowl, mix powder, ghee, baking powder and flour. Drain out all the excess water from the soaked suji and add it to it a bowl. Now mix together by rubbing the mixture between your palms to ensure everything gets mixed properly. Do not knead it. Add just enough of whole milk to make a medium hard mixture. Cover with a damp yet dry kitchen towel and keep it aside for 20 to 25 minutes. Later, divide the mixture into 18 to 20 portions. Make small balls by gently rolling each portion between your palms into a smooth ball. Place the balls on a plate. Heat the oil on a high and then lower the heat to a medium. Slip in the balls into the hot oil from one side of the pan, one by one. They will sink to the bottom of the pan, but do not try to move them. Instead, gently shake the pan to keep the balls from rounding on just one side. After about 5 minutes, the ball will rise to the surface. The ball should rise slowly to the top if the temperature is just right. Now take the slotted spoon and move it in a circular motion in the oil, making sure not to touch the balls. This will shake the balls and even ensure even browning of all the balls. If the temperature of the oil is too high, then the gulab jamuns will tend to break. So adjust the temperature to ensure that the gulab jamuns do not break or cook too quickly. The balls must be fried slowly under the medium temperature. This will ensure complete cooking from inside and even brown. The gulab jamun will look something like this. Now comes a diamond shaped desert made up of cashew nut named kaju kati. <laughs> kaju means cashew nut in Hindi. Burfi is not is often but not always made by thickening milk with sugar and other ingredients like dry fruits and milk spices. Kesar Kaju Katli is a Kaju Burfi recipe that includes saffron. The Kesar version of this dish is considered to be more rich and exotic. Ingredients 1 tablespoon corn flour, 1 by 3 tablespoon rose essence, 100 grams cashew nuts, and 80 grams powdered sugar. Take a double boiler and bring the water to boil. One thought add in the powdered sugar and milk powder in the top pan. Stir continuously for 2-3 to three minutes till the sugar and milk powder are warm and all the way through. Pour the cashew powder in a mixing bowl. Once the sugar and milk powder are done, add them to cashew powder in mixing bowl. Add the cardamom powder and mix them all well. If you are using rose essence, add 2 drops <laughs> to the 2 tablespoons of warm water. Start kneading by adding a little warm water at a time. Knead till it forms a dough and the cashew starts letting oil go. Grease hands and rolling pin for easy, easy rolling. 
go now the do to desire thickness on to a wax paper to avoid cut the rose out do into desired shape allow to set at room temperature for 1 to 2 hours or in refrigerator for 30 minutes store in refrigerator and serve at room temperature for great treat the kaju barfi will look something like this and it is very tasty too Sandesh is a Bengali dessert created with milk and sugar. Some recipes of sandesh call for use of chana or paneer instead of milk. Some people in the region of Dhaka call it ranhara, which is softer kind of sandesh made with mawa and the essence of curd. Modak. A modak is a sweet dumpling popular in western and southern <coughs> India. The sweet filling inside a modak is made up of fresh grated coconut and jaggery, while the soft shell is made from rice flour or wheat flour mixed with kheva or maida flour. There is nothing better than a bowl of gajar halwa on a cold day during winters. Gajar halwa is prepared across all the India on special occasions such as festival times and and on a special occasions too a chewy caramelized curd slow cook in an open vessel for almost an hour is treat in itself not only to kids but to adults as well it's surprising that a dessert could taste so heavenly with just handful of ingredients the gajar halwa will look something like this rasmalai is a dessert eaten in india pakistan and bangladesh the name ras malai comes from two parts in hindi ras meaning juice and malai meaning cream it has been described as a rich cheese cake without a crust ras malai consists of a sugary white cream or yellow colored uh, balls of paneer soaked in malai flavored with cardamom gujia gujia is a cuisine of north india particularly uttar pradesh bihar madhya pradesh and rajasthan it is a sweet dumpling made with suji or maida flour wheat flour and chamde khoya The gujia is filled with a mixture of grated and roasted dry fruits, khoya, coconut, and to add a grainy te- texture, a little suji. Kheer is a South Asian rice pudding made by boiling rice, broken wheat, tapioca, or vermicelli with milk and sugar. It is flavored with cardamom, raisins, saffron, cashews, nuts, pistachios, and or almonds. It is typically served during a meal or as a dessert. Kheer is prepared in festivals, temples, and in all special occasions. It is essential dish in many Hindu feasts and celebrations, and it is consumed by Indian Christians at a dessert during Indian Christian dinner. Your kheer will look something like this. Some other desserts which are prevalent in India are kulfi or Indian ice cream, jaggery slate, or we often call it as good ghee patti, ghevar or Indian cake. After the meal, we mostly eat matka kulfi and moti chur ladu. which looks something like this so hope you enjoyed the journey of indian deserts questions are open for query thank you thank you thank you, thank you. any questions <laughs> any questions from taiwan yeah we have a question go ahead mary Yeah, we're not able to hear. Yeah, we we Mary, we can't hear you. Uh, okay, can you hear again louder? You have mentioned that you one kind of dessert that's called. So it's inaudible. Uh, Mary, why don't you go ahead and repeat the question? We hear you fine. That we can't hear the student. Oh, uh, it is. Uh, you say that it has. Well, we are not clear with the question. We request them to write it on the chat box, and we yeah. replied. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We'll, we'll go ahead and go to the next one and we'll try to get the questions, I, I guess. Uh, Mary, could you, can you hear me at all? Yeah, because I, I didn't understand the question either. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try to type it down. You, yeah, can we, you, you can say it. We can hear you fine. We just cannot hear her. India okay. cannot hear her at all. Okay, well, and you can move on to the next school. Okay, first. let's go ahead and go to Nadia from the Ukraine. Uh, hello. Yes. No, we. Hi. Can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you fine. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, everyone. We are from Ukraine, Cherkasy Gymnasium Number Thirty One, and now we are presenting you a video of our um, Ukrainian dessert. It is called Vatrushki. Okay, some seconds, please. Okay, no problem. Mm. Блин, это у меня Is it visible for you? Yes. Okay, давай. Спроси чуть -чуть. Can you hear everything? Yeah, we can hear it fine. Go ahead. Go ahead.
and mix everything together. Now we must throw some balls and let them lay in cold for a while. Now we must press every ball in the wild uh, with the help of the gloss, like this. Can you hear us just now? Yeah, we can hear you fine. It, uh, the video's going a little off compared to what it was just a regular video, but that's very well done. Okay, we are very sorry. There is some uh, a mixture with the sound and the pictures, and that's why. Yeah. So, I will send. I will send everybody a copy of your link so they can see it because this is a. Uh, Extremely well done. This is like the second or third time you've shown us that kitchen, so I'm very envious. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll try to watch it up to the end because just to see the results, to see our vatrushki, they will bake them for 15 minutes. Some seconds left, sorry. That looks really delicious. Yes, yes. But at the end, we will go baked. And how long does it cook for? Maybe we'll finish just now. Maybe we'll stop our video, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, now our presentation about Ukrainian desserts just now. Okay, so you put a butter base on top of it, is that it? Or egg base? And now another presentation, it's not video. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, sweet dishes in Ukraine are cooked mainly from fruit, berries, and dairy products. Fruit are boiled in water with honey, then co cooled for some hours. So, and now... Go ahead. Okay, can you see our presentation? No, I cannot. We can't end it. Go back to screen sharing and then. Thank you. Can you see it now? Uh, it'll be coming up in just a second. There we go. We can see it now. Okay. Go ahead. We can see it. Okay. Uh, sweet dishes in Ukraine are cooked mainly from fruit, berries, and dairy products. First, fruit are boiled in water with honey, then cooled for some hours. Whip the white of egg and some rum and mix with mashed fruit, and then bake in the oven for 15 minutes. So, this dish is called a uh, froze or pinnik. It's a kind of foam. Another dish is called sweet babka. The main ingredient is mashed fruit, whipped yolks with sugar, some cream and some flour. And uh, some facts from our history. Okay. So for, first, mm -hmm. for centuries, the city of Lviv, Ukraine, uh, has been uh, treating uh, its residents uh, with trust in a unique aura uh, of coffee and uh, pastry uh, aromas. Delicious uh, Lviv sweets have a long history. Uh, since the Middle Ages, uh, you could uh, find the orientation sweets and French uh, dessert in Lviv. Uh, later, local uh, uh, artisans uh, learned to produce uh, their our, uh, own uh, diverse sweets, uh, but they, uh, by the uh, early 20th century, uh, there were sweet shops and con uh, confectioners in almost everything every building uh, or present-day Prospect Svobody and Prospect Shevchenko. Today, Lviv's pastry uh, shops and cafes uh, offer you a huge uh, selection of uh, sweet stuff uh, from different fruit desserts to fabulous cakes. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, special types of cakes and pastries called Plyatsky uh, are made mostly in Western Ukraine. Uh, these uh, uh, rectangular cakes come uh, served in pie shells with different fillings. Uh, Plyatsky uh, not only has to be delicious, but it must also be uh, pleasing to the eye, so its ingredients must be uh, treated with uh, imagination and care. Uh, uh, stop by uh, any limit uh, to show and uh, examine its uh, uh, dessert course. Um, you'll find a magnificent plum uh, piatsky, uh, richly covered with uh, fragments of uh, raisins and uh, piatsky with rose uh, confiture covered with chocolate glaze. <laughs> Uh, Kimbo with uh, sweets, uh, sirnish. And we can, uh, can't forget uh, to mention the sirnik, a beef style cheesecake. Uh, 
if your uh, sweet tooth, uh, you uh, find it uh, hard to resist. Uh, even the most uh, several mom uh, uh, in different uh, ones like chocolate, whipped cream, white cream, uh, and uh, marzipan uh, cannot resist the delicate flavors of cheese and vanilla. A century ago, every Lviv uh, lady used uh, a Cernix power uh, to win the heart of the boy uh, of her choice. Okay, these are uh, so the recipes of our uh, desserts. Okay, thin pancakes with apples. In Ukraine, thin pancakes are traditionally served for breakfast. These are small puffy pancakes fried from both sides of the pan. They can be of different kinds, sweet, salted, with, with or without filling. Sweet, thick pin, uh, pancakes with uh, raspberries or apples uh, are the regular choice for breakfast. Along with many other Ukrainian dishes, pancakes are served with sour cream, sometimes um, also with honey, jam, and different syrups. Okay, Ukrainian pancakes are somewhat similar to American pancakes, but they have more porous structure and fewer ingredients. So this is the recipe of our pancakes. Uh, Christmas uh, honey cake recipe. Uh, this recipe for Ukrainian Christmas honey cake uh, or medivnik uh, and other honey pastries are traditional for Christmas, New Year's, and uh, uh, Jewish New Year or uh, Rosh uh, Hashanah. Uh, the, the scarcity of sugar in the old days uh, inspired Ukrainian bakers to uh, experiment with uh, honey in uh, baked goods uh, to good uh, effects. Uh, there are as many uh, versions of uh, Medivnik as there are familiars. Some are made with sugar cream, uh, some with uh, uh, almonds or chocolate, and some are yeast raised. Okay, this is the recipe of our Medivnik. The main ingredient is honey. Uh, apples baked in pastry. <clears throat> the apple baked in pastry is one of the most popular Ukrainian desserts, a real classic of national cuisine. Its ingredient, ingredients are exclusively natural and very beneficial products as apples, honey and walnuts. Uh, the mix of honey and walnuts gives the dessert an uh, intimate uh, fragrance. Some housewives prefer to add raisins and dried apricots with the uh, Stuffing. The other might stir some jam, caramel, or toffee. Therefore, the apple will be sweeter. This is so the recipe of uh, this uh, dessert. And now uh, cheesecake with blueberry topping. Okay. And now treat our Ukrainian desserts. Smach noho. Any questions to us? Any questions? Uh, Taiwan has a question. Go ahead, Taiwan. Okay. Taiwan, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. I wanted to ask that uh, how do you spell uh, hand of the day spelling of the sand in the video? The name of the dish in the video. Which dish? Oh, in the video. Uh, could. Uh, Ukraine, could you tell us the name of the dish again in, in your wonderful video? Okay, the name of the dish is Batrushki. It's uh, like buns, and the filling is the cottage cheese. It's in the middle of the bun. It's called Batrushki. Batrushki. I, Mary, I, I will send each of you the video. The video is really nice. We'll post on on YouTube side. Yeah, along with the name. <laughs> right, yeah. It, it has a name in it. Okay, we're going to... Uh, go ahead. No, I, I was saying we would probably would like to try making those. Oh, yeah. That's the idea of doing this. You know, it, it's fun to learn uh, different uh, uh, foods. Okay, now today, before we go to Taiwan, 
I'd like to, uh, we got to do a couple changes here. We're going to go to Iran, and then we're going to go to Armenia, then we're going to go to Taiwan. We have some students in Armenia that are going to sing us a song, but Iran is going to uh, go ahead with their de uh, presentation first. It'll be very quick, Mary. Iran, go ahead. Can you hear us? Uh, speak a little louder, we can hear you. Okay. We can see your screen, go ahead. No, 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 wait, wait. She did better. Shir Baranj is a desert, desert that is made with rice. It's usually served with sugar or jam. The ingredients is rice, milk, rose water, heavy cream, and sugar or jam. Consort bagels. The ingredients are honey, saffron, rose water, sugar. Iran, we cannot see your presentation. Could you begin a little louder, please? Okay, so Samanu, uh, now you can see it? No. no, all we see is just a screenshot where it says Iranian dessert on 127. It's like frozen. So, should we start it over again? Yeah, start over again because we can't see it and we can't hear you. Then Armenia will be next. Probably need to step up closer to where the uh, microphone or wherever is receiving your uh, voice. Yeah. Now, Thank you, man. Shear Berenj is a desert that is made with rice. It's usually served with sugar or jam. The ingredients are rice, milk, rose water, heavy, and sugar or jam. Kansari bagels. We still can't see it. Hey, Mary, I'm going to try to email you their, their presentation because my machine is really messed up today. Can you see our presentation? No. We still can't hear it. See it. The second. Around. Why don't we go ahead, and while we're working on this, why don't we go ahead and go to Armenia. Armenia, you ready for your song? Okay, Armenia, go ahead with your song. Hello, Armenia. Yes. 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 Were you gonna say you were gonna sing a song today? You ready? Okay. While we're waiting for uh, that to work, let's go ahead and. Um, Sorry, uh, we don't know that we must prepare our seat. 
Okay. Uh, let me uh, try, to, uh, try to present something now or receive uh, some. Yeah. Go ahead. You can go ahead and do it. Maybe the other day. I don't know. Okay. Another day would be fine. No problem. Just keep on watching. Let's go to Taiwan. Taiwan, go ahead and I'm going to email you there. After Taiwan will be Russia. Taiwan, go ahead. Okay, uh, so um, I actually wanted to mention that uh, two things. Uh, one is that uh, the Indian kheer, we've actually made those. So they taste really good. So the Indian dessert, we've made those in our um, one of the intensive courses or the camp sessions. And also, uh, Michael, did you receive our PowerPoint yes. slide through Gmail? Are you able mm -hmm. to get it? No, my machine is so... <laughs> That's why I was late today. My machine's like totally frozen. So do you have a Gmail account? Yeah. Okay, I might need your Gmail account because I think um, most likely it's the Gmail accounts that work among each other. Okay. It's World, uh, world Class Schools for you, F, no, 4, and then the U at gmail.com. Could you type that out on the chat? And yeah, I'll be get glad to. to. Go, go ahead and start. Zoom meeting will start in a few seconds. Hi, I'm Bella. Hi, Alice. All right. I'm Bella. I'm Jenny. Today we are going to introduce the Chinese young juice from sauce. The ingredients of this dish include 300 grams of Chinese young, 10 flour pumps, 10 milliliters of honey, 15 milliliters of hot prime vinegar. The Russians first peel the Chinese young and chop them into the weights about one centimeter. Second, place the Chinese yams in boiling water for about 10 seconds. Third, drain the Chinese yams and immediately soak in cold water. Set aside. Are you able to see our slide? Yes, go ahead. And can you hear them? Okay. Okay, sure. Fourth, remove the core from the pumps and press the top with the seed to crush it. Fifth, mix 10 milliliters of honey and 15 milliliters of prawn vinegar with prawn puree. Sixth, dice the Chinese yams with prawn sauce. Then you can enjoy the Chinese yam with prawn sauce. And then we will explain why eating Chinese yam can make people healthy. The viscous liquid of Chinese yam is has been up the rest of digestion. In addition, Chinese yam has the antibacterial function, which helps to increase immunity. Chinese yam is low in calories, so it works by people fat like potatoes and tyros. Yam is rich in minerals and organic acid. It can help prevent illness, aging, and fatigue. Yam is very sour. So most people might mistake it as a kind of acid food. 
In fact, gum is an alkali food. It can shift your body's pH. Processed plums are also applied in daily diets. Put some plums on rice. It not only prevent food from soil leach, but also help increase appetite and help digestion. This is Chinese yam with plum sauce. Are you able to see the food? Yes. Now we are going to talk about the mixed rice porridge. The ingredients of this dish include water, 1,600 milliliters, brown sugar, 50 grams, millet, 20 grams, gyoza rice, 20 grams, soy beans, 40 grams, red beans, 40 grams, date, 50 grams, logan, 50 grams, water seeds, which has been sold for one night, 50 grams. Let's tell you how to make it. First, soak the beans for a day and soak the rice for half a day. We should also wash the red beans and remove the shell of the longans. Second, put all ingredients and brown sugar into water. Third, boil it over high heat and simmer it gently until it becomes sticky. The healthy effect of mixed rice porridge will be different by its ingredients. Generally, it lowers the blood pressure, insomnia, irritation, neurithemia, memory loss, and anemia. This is mixed rice porridge. Now we are going to introduce ginger tea with brown sugar. Ingredients, 600 grams of ginger. 110 grams of brown sugar, 1,000 milliliters of water. Directions. First, cut the ginger into pieces. Second, put them into water in a pot. Heat the water until it boils. Third, add brown sugar and other ingredients, including dry longans, mental seed, red dates, white fungus. You can add other ingredients according to your preference. Fourth, when all the ingredients will cook, you can enjoy the ginger tea with brown sugar. The amount of ginger and sugar you have to add depends on your performance. The ginger helps the blood circulation. It's especially good for girls. When the woman's penis comes, girls might feel uncomfortable, feel cold, or even look pale. The ginger can not only warm out the body and keep out the shell, but also metabolism. You can also add white fungus, red seed, or something else. The reason why brown sugar is healthier than other kinds of sugar is because it is crude and contains more minerals than other kinds of sugar. Minerals like potassium, calcium, iron, and folic acid. This is ginger tea with brown sugar. This is ginger. This is dry longans. This is white fungus. This is lotus seed. This is red dates. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you fine. Go ahead. Okay. Can you hear us? A question from Ukraine. Go ahead. Okay, uh, we want to know some details about Chinese yam. Uh, is it uh, a kind of uh, roll or a kind of bun? Can you explain us thoroughly? Okay. What Did is it? That, Mary? What does it look like, Chinese yam? Uh, 
Is it a roll? It's not a roll. It's a kind of it's a jam that is sweet potato, but a different type. Okay, we can't hear. Sorry. Hey, Mary, go ahead. Speak a little louder. I'm trying to do two or three things at the same time. Um, I haven't downloaded the uh, the PowerPoint the slides yet. Um, so um, you were asking about the uh, yam. It is a type of like a sweet potato, but it's of a different um, plant type. So it's not a roll. It's a kind of um, potato, a sweet potato type yes. of vegetable. The, the, the yams in, in the West are normally yellow. Are, are your yams white? Okay. A different kind of yam. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. In the West, they're kind of like sweet potatoes. I don't know. We also have sweet potato, but this is a different type. The whole, you know, not. Okay. There, there you go. I see it. Do you see that, Nadia? Did uh, Mary have you downloaded Iran's? Presentation? No, because I'm going back and forth. I'm trying to download it and then I have to okay. answer it. Okay. Uh, we're going to go back to Iran in just a second, and then we're going to go to Russia, uh, and then we'll do Brazil and Tennessee. So uh, we'll be in that order. Uh, Mary's so kind because my machine's kind of uh, messed up today. Uh, she is going to uh, play the. Um, PowerPoint that Iran made for their desserts, and Iran will, will tell them. Then we'll go to school 1357 in uh, Moscow. Hi. And we also may be joined by, yeah, uh, we also have, while we're waiting on a download, let's go ahead and get the uh, uh, other school in the Ukraine, and they have something from the Ukraine as well. So we'll We'll go to the Ukraine and then we'll go right to uh, download. Go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Go ahead. Okay, are you ready? Uh, Mike, we are waiting for our students. Okay. Uh, well, we're, we're, it's no problem because we're a little bit ahead of schedule or a little bit off. Uh, are you about ready, Mary, to do the Iran then? While we're waiting on Kate? Okay, there we go. Okay, we'll we'll do the. Uh, I'll try to get this off now. So we're gonna start now. Is it okay? Okay, go ahead, Iran. If you could do the words to this. is a dessert that is made with rice. It's usually served with sugar or jam. The ingredients are rice, milk, rose water, heavy cream, sugar, or jam. Pansari bagels. The ingredients are honey, saffron, rose water, and sugar. Samanu. Salmon is a sweet paste made entirely from germinated wheat, young wheatgrass, which is prepared for normal, Turkey and New Year. It is large part of it in Iran and some other countries. The practice has been pushed back to the Persian Empire. 
In modern times, making samanu can be a family activity. Traditional samanu is made entirely from germinated leaves and water, no other ingredients. Nowadays, it's common to add a bit of or to speed up the seasoning process, although this makes the taste taste somewhat bitter and less what sweet. Baslo. Baslo is a kind of pastry and it's uh, the souvenir of Malaya, Marabe, and Arab, Iran's western state. Baslo ingredients are cornstarch, rose water, saffron, sugar, butter, and shredded coconut. Enzuvia Bame. Enzuvia and Bame are one of famous cookies in Iran. Traditional Iranian treat, similar, similar to donuts. It's made from yogurt and starch and based dough, which is fried before being dipped in syrup. And Zulvia's ingredients are starch, yogurt, flour, solid oil, beer, water or rose water, eggs, lemon juice and sugar. Uh, Bamiya's ingredients are flour, water, uh, eggs, solid oil, sugar, lemon juice, and rose water. And this is the dough uh, that Bamiya uses. Uh, Uh, Farani is a Persian pudding dessert that the people make for various occasions. For some events, Farani is served cold uh, as a dessert, while at other times it's served warm for someone who is feeling under the weather or sick. And the ingredients are rice flour, sugar, milk, rose water, almonds, pistachio, cinnamon. And we use almonds, pistachio, and cinnamon for decoration. Falide. Falide is a dessert originated from Shiraz. It's made from a uh, delicate noodle uh, made from starch, floating in syrup flavored with rose water and lemon juice or sour cherry juice. Uh, traditional uh, ice cream in Persian Bastani is one of our traditional dessert uh, uh, that we can eat for dessert. Uh, the special ice cream in Iran is uh, Bastani Sonati that is made from uh, milk, uh, cream, sugar, rose water, uh, saffron, and pistachio. Uh, the other uh, usual ice cream in, in Iran is Mashhad ice cream. Uh, which is made from uh, leaves of uh, basan, so that we want to have chocolate ice cream. So, Rishta Khoshkar. Uh, Rishta Khoshkar is the traditional cookie for Gilan. Gilan is a province in Iran, and the ingredients are flour, sugar, walnut, cardamom, cinnamon, and ginger. As you can see in the picture, first we're going to make the dough, after that, we're gonna fill this with walnut, cardamom, cinnamon, and sugar, and ginger. Uh, that is just like a bit, um, bread that we mix it, and we fill the um, bread with these uh, materials. And then we fry it again, and this is a fry rush, a khushkar, ready to use. A kolucha. Kolucha is one of the uh, traditional uh, cookies of Iran, and different regions of Iran have different kolochas with different tastes. For example, in the Gilan province, kolochas most notably come from Lahijana Fuman. Uh, Lahijana Fuman are, are uh, one of uh, some of the cities of the um, Gilan province, and uh, we have some Kashanian and Yaz uh, cookies. As you, say, as you can see in the picture, we have different kolouches. For example, the first one is Gilan kolouche, the next is Kashan kolouche, and next is Yaz kolouche. 
And the main ingredients for making uh, kolucha is flour, sugar, baking powder, baking salt, saffron, vanilla, cardamom, and cinnamon, and egg. Show this out. The ingredients for shown as that are rice, sugar, rose water, cardamom, butter, sliced almond, saffron, and at first, we should boil the rice, and while rice is boiling, we should add saffron so we will get the saffron color and taste of it. And at last, uh, in a glass of the boiling, we should add sugar, rose water, and cardamom and butter to it, and let for a little more with the ingredients to see this added. If you just want your almonds to be boiled, you should add the almonds while the rice is boiling, or you can add the almonds in the glass to get the drink. And uh, the next one is yasa abahesh. For making yasa abahesh, you should mix rice flour in water and you strain it for making it smooth, then boil it. But stir it while it's boiling. Then add milk and let it boil. Then add cardamom, sugar, and rose water when it's got a little thick. We should let it uh, get colder and we can decorate it on it by pistachios and saffron. But we have other kinds of yasa behesh that are not very healthy. They are not uh, traditional and focus from the top of yasa. Thanks for the attention. <laughs>
if you have any questions. Any questions? I, I think you mean poppy seeds? No? Thank you so much, uh, uh, Kiev, and the wonderful job that you do there. And we're going to go to School 1357 in Moscow. Go ahead, Moscow, please. Hello, my name is Polly. These are my classmates, Vera, Nastya, Anya, and Lisa. We are from Moscow, Russia. We study at school number 1357 at uh, 8th form. Okay, continue. Just a moment. What screen? Thank you. Russian desserts. Many people in the West have heard about such traditional Russian dishes as blini and pilmeni, but not many of them know that this healthy diet of beetroot, buckwheat, and cabbage is uh, supplemented. <laughs> by a huge... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> by a huge assessment <laughs> of traditional... <laughs> <laughs> Russian sweets. Russians really have a sweet tooth and over the centuries they have uh, came up with a wide selection of uh, delicious treats. Today we are going to tell you about the most popular Russian dessert. Some of them are really old, others appeared in the 19th and uh, 20th century, but they are still very popular in this country. Kisel. Perhaps the most ancient dessert known to the Slavs was kisel. Its name is derived from a Slavic word mean, meaning sour. In the 9th to 10th centuries, kisel was prepared from oats by carefully baking them over a long time, so that natural molds were released for a strong sweet taste. The dessert was then sweetened further by the addition of honey. In the Russian primary chronicle, there is a story of how kisel saved saved a 10th century city, besieged nomadic Pekinex in, in 997, the first mention of this type of dessert. Nowadays, it is made of sweetened juice, thickened with corn or potato starch, sometimes fresh or dried fruits are added. Kisel can be served either hot or cold. Kisel can be also served on pancakes or with ice cream. If the kisel is made using less thickening starch, it can be drunk. Pranik or gingerbread is a dessert with lots of spices. First gingerbreads appeared in the 11th century. Today they are known not only in all regions of Russia, but also far beyond its borders as a traditional Russian delicacy. There were many customs, traditions, and beliefs associated with gingerbread. Gingerbread was baked for various purposes, as presents, parting gifts, wedding gifts, anniversary gifts, Christmas and Easter gifts. <laughs> By itself, gingerbread dough is nothing special. The taste and uniqueness of gingerbread depends on spices and other uh, additives. Russian <clears throat> gingerbread contains cinnamon, cloves, cardamom, lemon zest, nutmeg, mint, and ginger. When making gingerbread, <clears throat> Russians always use molasses, caramelized sugar, and honey. To some types of gingerbread, you can add jam or marmalade. Icing is not used only for Vazinski gingerbread and mint gingerbread cookies. All other kinds of Russian gingerbreads are always glazed with icing. Initially, gingerbreads are white and occasionally pinkish <clears throat> or with a pattern. 
Icing is made from water, sugar, and egg whites. The most known are Tula gingerbreads with jam, Moscow gingerbreads, small with, with black molasses, Gorodets gingerbreads, huge ones, Vyazinski gingerbreads with starch, syrup, and jam, and Rzhev gingerbreads. Tula gingerbread is a famous type of imprinted Russian gingerbread from the city of Tula. Usually, Tula gingerbread looks like a rectangular tile or a flat figure. Modern Tula gingerbreads typically contain jam or condensed milk, while traditionally they were made with honey. Gingerbreads have been made in Tula since the 17th century. The first mention of Tula gingerbread dates back to 1685. Okay. Pastilla is a candy a bit like marshmallow, which was made from baked apples and honey. Sugar was later used to substitute for honey and beaten eggs whites were added to aid with shape. The first mention of pastilla in Russian written sources dates back to the 16th century. In the 19th century, pastilla was made from sour Russian apples or mashed northern wild berries sweetened with honey and lightened with egg whites. The paste was baked in a Russian oven for many hours, then arranged in several layers inside a special box and then left to dry in the same oven. It took two days to make this traditional dessert and it was rather expensive. The small town of Kolomna claims to be the birthplace of original white foam pastilla and has a museum dedicated to history and traditions of pastilla production. The museum occupies a merchant house dating from 1800. Cake Napoleon is a Russian variant of French Milfei. In Russian literature, a cake named Napoleon is first mentioned as early as in the first half of the 19th century. There is a romantic explanation of the name. The cake has been very popular in Russia since the centenary celebration of the Russian victory over Napoleon in the War of 1812. During the celebrations in 1912, triangular-shaped pastries were sold resembling the bicorn. The many layers of the cake symbolized la grande armée. The top covered with pastry crumbs symbolized the snow of Russia, which helped the Russians defeat Napoleon. Later, the cake became a standard dessert in the Soviet cuisine. Nowadays, the Napoleon remains one of the most popular cakes in Russia and other post-Soviet countries. It typically has up to 10 or 12 layers of sweet dough and a delectable vanilla custard filling. Cake Napoleon recipe. For the dough, you need 200 grams of cold unsalted butter cut into chunks, four cups of flour, one egg, one cup of stir cream or one tablespoon of vinegar. For the cream, you need three eggs, one and a half cup of sugar, six tablespoons of flour, four cups of milk, and 200 grams of unsalted butter. Preparation. First prepare the cream. Cover the cream with a plastic wrap and chill in the refrigerator. Meanwhile, prepare the dough. Divide the dough into seven or more equal parts, forming each one into a ball, and chill in the refrigerator for two hours. Work with one dough ball at a time and keep the others covered. Using a rolling pin, roll one ball into a very thin square. Carefully put the square into the baking sheet. Pierce the dough randomly in three, four places. Bake each layer, each layer on the middle rack of the oven until light golden, six, eight minutes. Once you have finished baking all the layers, you can assemble the cake. Pick one layer that is not perfect, damaged, or slightly overbaked, and grate it to obtain fine crumbles. Now place one layer into a tray, wide enough to fit the cake. Spread a generous amount of cream in it. Put another layer on top and spread some cream all over it. Your assembled cake will look like a rock-hard inedible mess now. Do not panic, as the cake is not ready to eat at this stage yet. Allow it to rest at room temperature for at least 7-8 hours or best overnight. The layers will absorb the cream and the cake will be soft. The next day, cut the cake into pieces and enjoy. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, you're welcome.
Sorry, but we can't hear anything. I have, I have a question. Uh, have you ever, ever been uh, met the first about the uh, at home? Can, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, have you ever been met the first about at home by yourself? <laughs> Yes, we tried to, to make the cake Napoleon, it was very delicious. <laughs> it, 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 it is easy for, for the for person who, have, who is not good at uh, making food to make it. Yes, it's very easy to make. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'm wondering, that, have you ever visited the Pastilla Museum? You, you have said that you have a museum for Pastilla, right? Can you repeat the question, please? Um, and you have mentioned that in the BBT that um, you have a museum for Pastilla. It's uh, like, it's like marshmallow, right? And have you ever visited? Yes. So, um, can you tell me what is uh, introduced in that museum? We can show you. This is Pastilla. Wow. <laughs> That's really lovely. And May I get are, another question? These are gingerbreads. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Hey man, that's kind of interesting because you you used some ginger, the people in Iran used some ginger, and the people in Russia used the ginger too. So it's kind of neat how ginger is used in different countries. That's very interesting. If we have a, we, we try to keep on schedule here. We're going to go to uh, Brazil. If there are no more questions. Let's go to Brazil. Then we're going to go to Tennessee because Tennessee is going to have to leave pretty quick too. Uh, Brazil, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to share the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, can you see and hear us? Yeah, can we can see. It? We can see and hear. It. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Eduardo. I'm gonna describe you briefly some traditional desserts in Brazil. And then my friends are gonna present other desserts in detail. Uh, the first one is pamoy, sweet corn cake in English. In English, its main ingredient is corn, is packed with the corn leaf. It's more common in the southeast and northeast of Brazil. And there are cars with loudspeakers to sell the pamoy. And now brigadeiro. Brigadeiro is like a bonbon. It's made of chocolate with milk and condensed milk. It's very popular all over the country. You can eat brigadeiro with a spoon in a pyrex dish. And they can be rolled up in the form of small balls with sprinkles. The next is Pedmulek, Brazilian peanut trolley in English. The main ingredients are peanuts and sugar. It's very common in the southeast region of the country. It's quite hard and it's the main sweet in June festivals. 
and the last is Sapiosa. It's made from many of flour. It's typical of the northeast of Brazil. It was created by the Tupi indigenous people. Its form is similar to a pancake. It's stuffed with various fillings like guava sweet, strawberry, chocolate, cheese, bacon, and so on. Hi, I am Anna. I'm gonna talk about passion fruit mousse. Mousse de maracujá in Portuguese. About, about passion fruit. It's popular now as the fruit of tranquility because it has properties that are as natural sedative in humans. There are 150 species of passion fruit, and Brazil it is its largest producer. Passion fruit mousse is a typical sweet of Brazilian cuisine. It's made of yellow passion fruit or sour passion fruit. Ingredients: one cup of table cream, two cans of sweetened condensed milk, and two cups of of frozen passion fruit powder. How to prepare? Place all the ingredients in a blender and blend everything until it becomes smooth. Pour into a bowl or a small individual serving dishes. And chill it for at least four hours in the fridge, preferable overnight. It's served from. Okay. Now the next student couldn't come, she is on vacation, traveling, but she made a video and sent to me, okay? I'm going to play the video. Hi, my name is Erika, and I'm going to talk about guava sweets with cheese. It's known as Romeo and Juliet because the mixture between the salt and sweet flavors seems weird and unlikely for some people. It isn't an expected. Is it playing well for you? Yeah, it's fine. Sweet. One pound of our most common cheese costs between seven and nine dollars. It's a typical sweet of the countryside food south of Brazil. We can find the guava sweet in jelly preserves in bars called Cascão in Brazil and ice cream. There are many types of cheese. But here in Brazil, people choose the Minas Gerais cheese to be served with the guava sweet. Ingredients to guava sweet. Red guava, water, and refined sugar. Peel the guava and cut it into pieces. Place the pieces in a blender and blend as if made a juice. Seed the seeds and place the guava juice already steeped in the pan. Add the sugar and leave on low heat until it's tea. Serve when cold with tea. Now, I'm going to talk about how the people make the Minas cheese. After the milk reaches the point of curd, it should be placed in a mold and press it, taking off all the Syrup and leave it on the mess. Then, season it with the salt and take it off the mold. Recipes that are inspired by sweet cake, cheesecake, mousse, pastry, pizza, ice cream, pancake, popsicle, and jelly roll. And our famous cheese bread with the guava sweets. Thank you. Hello, I am Sofia. I am gonna talk about milk pudding. 
Brazilian style. Ingredients. One can of sweet and condensed milk, one can of milk, and four eggs. Ingredients for the sauce. One cup of sugar and one third cup of water. Preparation. Melt the sugar in a pan, add water to make a sauce. Grease the mold with the sauce. So this pan will be caramelized. Beat the ingredients in a blender and pour in the caramelized mold. Place the mold in the center of a roasting pan with your water. Then heat for about four minutes. To mold, let it cool to room temperature and place in the fridge. After at least six hours, you can serve. Thank you. So, do you have any questions about Brazilian desserts? Any questions from about Brazilian desserts? Okay, if not, let's go. Very good job. Let's go to Tennessee for our last one today. Tennessee, go ahead. Tennessee, go ahead. Um, we're from Tennessee, and we're about to show you how to make the best blueberry cobbler. This is Sweetwater High School Spanish 2, and we will be doing a bilingual presentation. Best Blueberry Cobbler. El mejor pastel de Empecemos. What is a cobbler? Cobbler refers to a variety of dishes containing a fruit filling poured into a baking dish and covered with batter before baking. It is very popular in the southern United States. ¿Qué es un cobbler? Un cobbler se refiere a una variedad de platos que contienen fruta que se basea en un molde para hornear y se cubre con masa antes de hornear. Es muy popular en el sur de los Estados Unidos. Ingredients. One cup of sugar, one cup of self-rising flour, one fourth cup of melted margarine, half cup of milk, two cups of blueberries, one cup of water. Los ingredientes. Una taza de azúcar, una taza de harina con levadura, un cuarto de una taza de mantequilla derretida, media taza de leche, dos tazas de arándanos, una taza de agua. Prepare a grease 9 by 9 inch baking dish. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees, 175 Celsius. Preparación. Grase el molde de 9 por 9 pulgadas. Se caliente el horno a 350 grados, 175 Celsius. Directions. Stir half of the sugar and one cup of flour together in a bowl. Separación. Tire media taza de azúcar y una taza de harina en un tazón. Add the melted margarine and the milk. Añade la mantequilla derretida y la leche. Stir into a smooth batter forms. Estire hasta que forme la masa. Pour the batter into the prepared baking dish. Add the blueberries and sprinkle with the remaining sugar. This may seem weird, but pour the cup of water over the blueberries. Esto parece extraño, pero añada la taza de agua. Bake for 45 minutes, serve warm, and top with whipped cream or ice cream if desired. Delicioso! Horne por 45 minutos, sirva caliente con crema o helado, si desea. Delicious. This is Sweetwater High School Spanish 2, and we will be doing a bilingual... Okay, you can speak. Do you have any questions? Um, do you have any questions? Any questions from any of the 
Uh, students. <laughs> Actually, I have a question from Taiwan. Is that a um a dessert where you eat with a spoon, or is it sort of solid, more solid form and cake like? No, it's messy. It's messy. You eat it with a spoon. You eat it with a spoon. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, you need a spoon or a fork for sure. <laughs> Especially if you put ice cream or something or something hot on top of it. Some people put hot, some people put cold, and it gets messy really quick. Especially if you serve it hot, if you put ice cream on it too. Thank you. Sounds very delicious. <coughs> Rich. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to say. Very popular here in the United States. Yeah. Are there any questions from anybody, or does anybody have any questions of each other? If not, uh, people from Armenia, did you want to? Can you wave to everybody? Goodbye. 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 Sorry, we don't have a time. Our children are going to their home and our center is closing. Can we leave now? Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed Bye. it. Bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to say goodbye until next month then. And uh, hopefully that Okay, Brazil. Did you did you read the, the Go question? Go ahead, Brazil. Ask your question about rosewater. That's a good question. Many many countries we saw the rosewater, and we we actually don't use it in Brazil. It's not common at all in here. And I would like to know what is it really, and how common is it? Okay, Iran or. Uh, I think uh, in Taiwan there was Taiwan, Iran used rose water. I know. Go ahead. Uh, in Taiwan, the rose water is not that commonly used in the food, but mostly used in fragrance, um, like um, perfume, uh, bath gel, and things like that. But we do have a rose tea. That's the close to, closest to it. Okay. What? Well, it, Iran, are you still on? Could you tell us what rose water really is? That's a good question. I, I don't know if they're still on. Yeah, they're, they're still. Uh, um, so it's the same as uh, what Taiwan said, but uh, rose water is a flavored water made by steeping rose petals in water. It is the hydrosol uh, portion of the distillate of rose petals a byproduct of the production of rose food we use in perfume. And um, we usually use it in our desserts and some, uh, sometimes we just maybe drink with it and there's so just for the, yeah, and sometimes we just use it in the teas and it's so useful and healthy it's and so uh, we call it golab in our um, version and because go means flower and ab means water so we just distills it. Wow, great answer. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, so we got a picture of everybody here. It, it was kind of interesting day because we did four different continents and we were a little late. So I apologize for that. My machine's acting up. I had to restart it several times. But uh, we will do this again in February. I will do it after the, the uh, Chinese New Year, so uh, that'll be probably at the end of the month, so some people will celebrate, and I think we'll be joined by Korea, and we're going to try to be joined by some schools in Africa as well, so it'll be a, a real special treat. Also, many of the schools that are in South America and in the Southern Hemisphere will be back from uh, summer vacation at that time, so we'll be joined by a few more different schools. So we... we I do appreciate it so much, and thank you again for everybody, and a, a real good job. Thank you, guys. Michael and all, I'd like to make a proposal that um, if 
each teacher has a Gmail account that we can uh, put those, you know, accounts together because the Google Cloud is actually a very convenient tool where we can all upload our uh, presentations there and um, we can just retrieve the um, files. Yeah, I, I think you're, you're, you're probably right. If we, I'll put that in the next one. Everybody have a, a Google, uh, a Gmail account. And then that way it'll work out a lot better, especially as we merge towards uh, being picked up by, uh, I was going to tell you, that's a good uh, point. We are supposed to uh, start sometime in March or maybe April now with a college in uh, Peru. And they would like to kind of do this. As you notice, we've gone from just doing live demonstrations to doing a bunch on PowerPoints. And what they want to try to do is we would turn in our videos and then the colleges would actually, uh, the, the cooking college would take the recipe and then uh, they will have like a little contest and then they invite you back and then they would give you honors and it'll be really kind of a nice deal. So we would have that as a special one. We'd have two events each year, uh, one, one like we're doing now and one very special one. So I, I think that might would be uh, kind of nice. They're going to also offer some scholarships too if people are interested in going to. There's they own a college in the United States as well. Excellent. And Michael, are you are you going to uh, also announce the uh, February fourth session, the uh, college admission session, or yeah, uh, very good point. Uh, on February the fourth, uh, we're having a, a college admissions, and we would. I've been emailing you guys out, and uh, Mary's going to be running it. Uh, we have s several schools from the uh, United States, Taiwan, and South America that will be involved. Uh, what we're trying to do is get people interested in, in actually talking to students what college is like in different areas. And uh, it, it's, it's fascinating. Here in the United States, I know I probably could speak for Tennessee as well, College is extremely expensive. Uh, applying for scholarships is a full-time job, and it, it's very, very difficult. Uh, in some in some areas, we we're talking to Korea, and they said it was easier to get in Harvard or Yale than it was to get in some Korean colleges. And I know how hard it is to get in Harvard or Yale. So uh, yeah, I really like to uh, find out more. Uh, I will email you out uh, probably on Monday more about the video for next week. And if you're interested, we'll be doing it on Zoom. Mary will be doing it on H323. And you can join us just like you're doing here. And uh, it'll be really fascinating. And one more plug before we do it real quick. We're doing a moot court. Uh, on uh, June the 15th will be the 800th anniversary of the Magna Carta, which was signed in Runnymede, England. Uh, that started basically the principles of trial by jury and some other things. Uh, our bar association is doing some moot courts, and uh, I'd like to try to do an international one with a case, and I'll be sending out some stuff about that too. It would be really nice if we could get you guys to join. Uh, I think I've talked to uh, Kurad before when uh, the teacher went to Canada, and she had talked to the, the people in Canada as well. And we'd love to have some of the uh, other schools involved. It, it's very nice. Anybody else before we go? So the case is not set yet? Well, we had a case from Pennsylvania, which is great, and it's not bad. I was supposed to have a new case before Wednesday, but I do not have it yet. I'd like to use that case, Mary, because we can use that several times. And they have. Uh, we're going to do some work with Hong Kong and another school as well. So... I like to use one case, and that way it doesn't complicate things. Okay, so that other case or your, your new one that isn't out yet? Yeah, the one that isn't out is one we're going to use both in March and then uh, in uh, April and then uh, eventually June as well if we're still involved. And they would like to have uh, something for the 800th anniversary. Okay, so the so final confirmation is the – case is not out yet. We don't want to start with an old one yet. Yeah, the, the case is not out yet. I'm supposed to have it by Friday. We're going to a competition on Thursday. I probably could have it to you by Sunday or Monday. As soon as I get it, I will send it out. And is the uh, dates for Mar are, are the dates for March still 13th and 14th? Because we can do Saturday if possible. That, I, I think we'll probably just do it on Friday. 
Okay, because Saturday also works for us as well. Yeah, well, it, it, we could do it either. It just depends how many people are interested, and we could do it on a Saturday. If uh, I was trying to do it, if we get some students that can do it on Friday, if you know what I'm talking about, and uh, th that's why I just put it down there like that. Okay. I didn't want to exclude anybody. Sure. Any other sites have some comments? Sometimes even. If we're talking to Korea, maybe Saturday morning for them if we do it Friday afternoon for us. Yeah, Korea is just one hour uh, ahead of us. I know. For some reason, it, it seems like it's years ahead. I don't, I, I'm, <laughs> we, 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 we do so much weird stuff. Like we do an afternoon. We do everything in Korea in the afternoon, early morning for them. Okay. So we, we don't make... They, I, I guess they make us stay up late. Which school is that? Any other people like to say anything? Okay. What school, what school did you say in Korea that was? Uh, What Ho Soon International Convention High School? Yeah. And what about the second one? Is that also? No, that's in India. Okay. Oh, you and you made a calendar? No, they made a calendar. Watch, Just, I tell you how nice it is. Oh wow! Okay. They take distance learning to a new level. They put us in the calendar. Yeah. I guess we should all do that. <laughs> hey, uh, I guess if you have money, uh, I hate to say it, but in the United States, we're almost like a third world country. So, you know, and I know that uh, Kate and Nadia in the Ukraine, they're battling a, a lot of a uh, lot of issues when it comes to economics that, you know, it's uh, <laughs> I don't know if I could even afford a calendar anymore. You know, in the last uh Three months, we've raised almost six thousand dollars by doing concession stands to try to finance our uh, 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 moot court challenges. So we're going to our state competition on Thursday and Friday and Saturday this week, and then we'll see if we anybody advance. So we're kind of hoping Jacob and several teams get to advance. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, Good we'll luck. need it. Thank you so much, everybody, and and we'll Thanks. talk to you later. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.